No, there's no adults home. Interesting. I wonder where they've gone. Perhaps we just keep coming at the wrong time. Sebastian, do you think that that nest looks like it's grown? Yeah, no, I don't really see any main, major sort of renovations happening. Like I said, I don't think that's the complete nest. It's not very big. They're not small birds. Excuse me, you're trying to talk about African Harry hawks here, not hardy dars. I can't even see the hardy dars. Oh, it's in the knob thorn. Okay, let me go to let me go forward to show you the the bird, the hardy dars. This is the hardy dar perch. There's three of them. This is obviously where they're going to roost for the evening. I'm, gonna try, I'm sorry, Seb. It's a very awkward spot to park. My my humble apologies. Seb just needs to level out the camera. We've parked in a strange position. But there are three hardy dars in the snobthorn tree. It's a good spot to roost. Not over there, that's a good spot to uh, proclaim your territory too. But now it's stopped singing. Uh, not that it has a beautiful voice, and it's going to preen its feathers instead. We'll keep coming back to the gymnogene nest, and hopefully we'll catch the adults. I don't know if they necessarily would have abandoned it. Oh, I reckon we just keep coming at the wrong times, and you can also hear a grey-headed bush shrike. You may hear that call as we watch the hardy dar. It's not the hardy dar making that noise. And they're beautiful birds. So only when, of course, the light catches their feathers do you see those beautiful colours, those uh, iridescence, and uh, sometimes it can be a little bit purple. Sometimes you see bits of green. Green and sort of the bronze is the normal colours, but every now and then... I have seen some beautiful sort of purple colours coming off of their feathers too. <laughs> Tony, you said that you love the name Hardy Da. It is a cool name and a lot of the birds are named because of the sounds that they make. And that's exactly where the Hardy Da Ibis got its name. There's the other one. Feathers ruffling in the wind. It always just amazes me how sort of particular these birds are when it comes to preening. They do pay a lot of tension, and they're very delicate with their feathers too. I mean, when we watch zebra and wildebeest, you know, grooming one another, they don't do it very elegantly. I mean, normally with its wildebeest, it's got its back leg stretched behind its ear, and it's having a scratch, and then it's also biting another part of its body at the same time. Well, the birds don't do that. They, they just look very poised, don't you? Now, a lot of you are probably disagreeing with me, especially um, because I'm talking about a hardy dar. But they're lovely birds. <laughs> this is so nice. So, well, I'm sure a lot of you are disappointed. We, we came to check the gymnogene nest, but instead we got hardy dars. Well, that's all right. We need to start looking out for hardy dar nests too, because those chicks are really not pretty. They're quite funny to look at, although no little... Uh, chicks nest things are very pretty until they get their feathers now Roshni you're wondering if the male and female hardy dars are different looking I've never been able to tell the difference between the two but what we shall do is I shall pop onto the trusty old bird app and let's see if they give any um, sort of specifics there's some brown hooded kingfishers that have joined us too you may be able to hear them and the very nice call that they have. Let's quickly just check if they if they do talk about no, they just really talk about the adults. So there's no speculation or, or there's no sexual dimorphism, but apparently, yeah, no adult, adult. I'm looking at the pictures too. They all just refer to all the pictures as adult and then juvenile, adult, adult, adult. So no, I don't think so. What you do tend to find, though, with a lot of the female birds is that they're often larger than the males. But again, that doesn't ring true with every bird species like it does with the African fish eel, which we have seen already. It does make sense, though, uh, being a female bird to be slightly larger. Uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously you're the one that's producing the eggs using a lot of your sort of resources when you're coming into breeding season it's actually quite tough and then again so the males they've got to put their beautiful colors on and then some of them grow extra feathers you know it's very exciting <laughs> 